Where is InsureTech headed next? This is where indie agents own the answer. Welcome to the Vertifor Insurance Podcast. Let's go. Welcome back, insurance industry. Today, I have with us a very special guest, the one and only. I, if you have not heard this man's name, by the way, you, you must have your head stuck in the sand uh, because he is a, an insurance veteran. Um, he has helped countless agencies. He's been at the forefront of even technology outside the industry coming in in the industry. Uh, I remember when he you know pioneered and piloted LinkedIn's uh, you know, beta test with some of their, uh, you know, live uh, video capabilities. So uh, he was actually the one that uh, led a lot of the content around um, a large agency management system companies, big partnership with Google in this space. So, man, Steve Anderson, CEO, co-founder of Catalyst, you have been around the block, sir, and I am just so, 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 so grateful and excited for you to be here with us today. Welcome. Well, thank you, Sydney, and always great to talk with you. And, um, you know, I figure some of that's just the benefit of longevity, right? I've been, I have been around a long time and seen a lot and uh, have a lot of history kind of, as, as my team tells me, kind of hidden in my brain that I don't even realize is there. But, uh, yeah, it's great to be here. That's fair. I, I will say, though, I, there's been a lot of people who've been in the industry a long time and haven't taken uh, necessarily taken up the opportunities that you have. You're that guy who just walks through the door if it's open. So I think it speaks to why you are where you are today. Um, for those people that I mentioned who might have their heads stuck in the sand, let's give them a little 360-degree uh, view, a look back before Catalyst on who Steve Anderson is and, and just how you've impacted the industry. Sure. Um, so I actually started my insurance career uh, a very long time ago now uh, in an independent agency in Washington, D.C. Uh, <laughs> and it was my father-in-law's agency. I came in to help out for a while. And uh, as we know in the industry, at least the agency part of the industry, it's uh, when you say a while, it's kind of like saying uh, you stepped in quicksand and it's going to be a while <laughs> before it lets you go. Uh, and so fast forward a lot of years. So I spent 13 years there, and that's really where I got my first, I would say, taste of technology. Mm -hmm. the, that was literally in the early 80s, um, and insurance companies were giving away agency management systems for you know premium commitments and volume stuff. And I, I literally uh, just talked to somebody today uh, who was uh, working with Aetna, Mm. and giving away Gemini agency management system. So again, oh my gosh. old, old system oh my that gosh. you know most people probably don't remember or never heard about. So fast forward, I worked there 13 years, uh, ended up leaving family issues that stuff happens. Yep, yep, um, yep. And uh, ended up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, actually starting at that point, this was 91, uh, doing some consulting for agencies around system selection. Um, a lot of agencies were either changing systems or for the first time getting a system. So I met two guys who owned an agency there It invited me to come in with them. I did producer operations, did all kinds of different things and, and kind of continued my t technology bent. Um, in that agency, uh, we pioneered the, um, the ability to scan paper files and store documentation electronically and and we started that process in 1994 mm. so i won't say we were the first but we were certainly among the first so then i started talking about what we were doing and um realized i really enjoyed that part of the business so i left that agency started my own business in 99 and uh literally up until two years ago maybe two and a half years ago uh, I was had my own business doing research, writing, speaking, consulting around technology for independent agents, mm, mm. and that changed a couple years ago. So yeah. we can talk about that. Yeah. And and <laughs> and people can find you on Amazon because you wrote a book about I Amazon. Actually, what was and and yeah. tell tell us a little bit about the the content of that book, the purpose of that book, why you wrote it. Um, so the book is called The Bezos Letters: Fourteen Principles to Grow Your Business Like Amazon. Um, and it really came out of my work with the insurance industry, risk, 
and technology. And mm -hmm. I started asking the question, is the biggest risk agencies face actually not taking enough risk? Mm -hmm. As we know, technology continues to develop rapidly. It's not slowing down, it's speeding up. Agents don't have the time to kind of sit back and go, eh, I'll wait a few years, see if that, you know, is something I should do. So that started me looking at companies that were once successful and are no longer here and companies that were successful and continue to be successful and trying to understand the difference. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, actually I came across Amazon uh, as one of those companies that continues to be successful, discovered the shareholder letters that Jeff Bezos started writing in 1997 and became very intrigued with those letters and realized that there were th themes and threads through those letters. Uh, and he wrote them from 1997. The last letter he wrote was in 2020 when he stepped down as, as CEO. So that was the genesis of, of the book. Mm. And uh, long story, kind of how it actually got published, but um, I, I will say surprisingly to me, it's had some success. So. Wall Street Journal USA Today bestseller, and it's now been translated into 19 languages. Wow, that's amazing. Are you going to put it on Audible? It already It, it is I on Audible. That. You did that. It already is on Audible. Yes. Uh, I did that. Yes. Awesome. Actually, uh, I published the, uh, the um, audio book at the same time we published the physical book. That's fantastic. So it's Kindle, audio, physical obviously available on Amazon. <laughs> That's fantastic. So what was the answer to the question ultimately uh, is the biggest risk agencies are facing the fact that they maybe aren't taking risk in technology? Did you ever and end the, up? Well, the, the short answer is yes. Yes. Okay. And what really intrigued okay. me about Bezos is, and I describe this in the book, is I call him the master of risk mm -hmm. because of his willingness to use risk and suffer failure strategically to grow. And the big thing that I find with agencies, I, I suspect you might too, is the fear of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. And I still remember an agency in Texas asked that question, well, what if I make a mistake on picking a new vendor or whatever? Mm -hmm. And I said, you're going to mm -hmm. get used to it. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to do to mitigate the risk? And, and what are you going to do to learn from it if you do make a mistake? Mm -hmm. And how do you protect the downside of the risk taking? So um, Bezos did that brilliantly, I think. And you continue to see Amazon improve, grow, experiment, invent, um, all those things that the typical agency is so risk averse. And, and I understand it, right? Agencies see all the worst things that can happen. Mm -hmm every day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and certainly with technology with consumers changing with attitudes changing with expectations changing they can't just sit back and not do anything mm -hmm. but they can but i think that's the downward slope of those companies that were once very successful and are no longer here mm -hmm. because they stopped being willing to take those necessary risks mm. so is this is this what led you to Catalyt at the end of the day? Because because Catalyt, and, and, and you guys will hear a little bit about what Catalyt does, but Catalyt kind of solves this problem in, in a way of, of uh, trying to help agencies move past that fear. Yeah. So, um, yes, I would say. Okay. So I, I would say a couple things. One is um, one of the things that is changing in the insurance agency world is association management. So there's been a real transition over the last few years of long time, very successful association, state association executives retiring and new people stepping in. Mm -hmm. So I'm in New York, uh, just finished a presentation uh, for the Big Eye of New York. And Lisa Lounsbury is an example of that understanding agents need help, their members need help with technology, she created a strategic initiative for the association to do something about it. Mm. So she, along with two other state execs, Jeff Albright in Louisiana and Matt Benicheski in Wisconsin, approached me um, and, and Lisa called me up and she said, so here's our thought, here's what we're trying to put together. We're not making much progress. 
you wouldn't be interested in helping, would you? And as I say now, I think I surprised her and myself by saying I might be. So a couple things. One is it really is a perpetuation plan I never knew I had, mm. right? Because how do you mm-hmm. perpetuate consulting and, and all of that? Mm. And, okay. and what I tell people is Catalyst is what I've done for 25 years improved because we have team a team now helping develop content and ideas and delivering and all those things I was doing all by myself. And um, it's um, scaling to a different level. So we have seven states that ended up investing in Catalyst, New York being one, those three states actually being three, and we have four more. Um, and then a total of 23 states now that offer Catalyst services to their members. Hmm. And the easy way to think about what we do is we help agencies maximize the technology they have, maybe get rid of something they're not using, right? Because I hear that all the time. I've got all these different platforms. It's it's the shiny object syndrome that actually never gets implemented, right? Oh, this new cool tool I heard about, we got to have it. And then nothing ever happens. Mm-hmm. So we help them maximize what they have. And then we help them understand what they might need. So that means discovering what's out there and what's new evaluating it, selecting the best option for their agency, and then implementing it so they get that return and they maximize that tool to either help them increase revenue or reduce uh, expenses internally. Mm. So I uh, I do have to tell the audience, for, for those of you guys who have the opportunity, go to catalyst.com, check out the... Um, the the site I do think there's a there's a there's a paid uh, gateway there to get access to um, the resources but it, it it think of being able to go to one place and really learn about the entire insure tech world and all the solutions that are available it's it's fantastic uh, you can sort and filter by different categories of insure tech uh, there are webinars that you can be a part of to you know take a deep dive on certain things. It's, it's, it really is becoming a very robust ecosystem to, to sort of collect and categorize what I would call the wild, wild west of insure tech. <laughs> so, I would too. Yeah. Yes. So we have over, I don't know the exact number right now, but we have over 100 different solution providers and about 20 different categories of technology. So mm-hmm. our guides and reviews are one way that agents can discover what's out there. Or if they hear about a new provider or somebody at a meeting or a fellow agent or whatever, they have a place to go to research it um, without having, you know, you can Google stuff and that's often a lot of work to mm-hmm. actually figure out. But what we've done is standardize the information and, and put together in one place uh, information on virtually all of those solution providers. So agents have a better source for making those decisions. Yeah. It's like the Google of insured tech. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's kind of like the Google of InsureTech is kind of how I think about it. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that you guys, one of the projects or initiatives that you work on every year is the, uh, this, this study. Um, and, and essentially you go out and survey all of your members and, and sort of get a lay of the land on, uh, tech adoption, uh, tech challenges, tech opportunities as it relates specifically to, the independent insurance agency. And I believe this is the second year that we're, it's running? Yes, that's correct. We Our first edition was uh, out in October of last year. Okay. And then our second edition is was released just a few weeks ago at the end of April. Awesome, awesome. So I wanna d- dig into this study uh, and give people a, a sort of 30,000 foot view. We, we're not gonna tell you everything. You have to go download the study yourself. We'll tell you where to find it in just a sec. Uh, but we will give you some of the key takeaways just so that you get an idea of what's going on with InsureTech and the Indie Channel. Um, before we get into some of the highlights though, Steve, how do you guys, you know, I, I think there's a certain, um, uh, you, we want to be able to trust what the highlights are telling us, right? So maybe you could give the audience a little bit on how, how you guys go about collecting this data, you know, where the data comes from, how the, yep. the study is put together. So we have, we have two sources of data. Okay. Um, the first is what we call a tech assessment. So when an agency first engages with us uh, at Catalyst on the platform, our first step 
and we highly encourage, we push <laughs> pretty hard that they complete a tech assessment. That is a uh, multiple questionnaire uh, where we help them evaluate where they currently are in their use of technology. And we do that in uh, five different areas of agency operations. Um, those are agency operations, cybersecurity, technology platforms, marketing and sales, and agency strategy. And we actually give them a score uh, in each of those areas with 100% um, being they've got everything in that, whatever less than that as a percentage means there's probably some work that they need to do in order to bo bolster what they do. But the whole idea behind it is we give them a starting place. Mm -hmm. Here's where you are now. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to help them create a strategic technology plan. Mm -hmm. Where are my holes? What do I need to be developing? And maybe more importantly, when, right? There seems to be a, I've got to do everything all at once. And when you're doing technology stuff, there are stepping stones that make sense. Sometimes technology builds on other stuff that you have. And so we kind of help them with that. And, and I would say our overall results on a tech assessment is the, the average is 49%, which means they have implemented and are using only half the technology we think they should. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That, that's the benefit of the tech assessment. Mm -hmm. The other source of data is another survey that we call the tech stack survey. So finish the tech assessment, go right into the tech stack survey. The tech stack survey is what are you using and how satisfied are you? So that's where we, on, on 20 different categories, what are you actually using in your agency? Okay. And then how satisfied are you on a one to five star basis? And, and, and when you say what are you using in your agency, uh, we just mean what, what, what do you have available to use? So, so, so the tech assessment is really, okay, you have a, you know, AMS 360, which is a for a four agency management system. Um, right. So, but you're only using 50% of it from the tech assessment. We see that the, the, the second study looks at, well, you have AMS three, you're using AMS 360 in your agency. You have it in your agency. Correct. Got it. Got it. And, got it. Okay. and um, what are the other platforms that you're using? Okay. Okay. Because right. agents ask who's using what? Mm -hmm. Right. Who's what? What are the and, and I believe I may be wrong, but I believe for the first time we've got at least some reasonably accurate numbers about who's using what. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that we ask and, and or that we have in the report is the average number of tech platforms that an agency has. And so that varies by agency size and we measure size by revenue. Mm -hmm. um, less than five hundred thousand small agency, mm -hmm. 6.2. That's crazy and, to me. That is yes. a, that is a, I, I can't wrap my hand around that, that the head around that number, can't even say the word head because it's, it's so mind blowing, right? I mean. Well, what do most agencies think? Management system, maybe quoting system, maybe something else, but the average now is 6.2 for the small agency. When you get over 5 million in revenue, it's 11.7. Wow. That's <laughs> so, so, so much technology. <laughs> correct. And the, again, this starts highlighting questions like, what do you have that you're not mm -hmm. using? Mm -hmm. What sh should you get rid of? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you did, is it working? Maybe you just never implemented. I, there's lots of conversation around that. And are you maximizing all those different platforms? Because now we start talking about, are they communicating together? Are they sharing data? Are, are you know, are, do you even understand what you have? And how are you incorporating that into your operations, both from a marketing and sales and growth standpoint, as well as an internal mm -hmm. efficiency mm -hmm. standpoint? Okay, now here's the most interesting part about that number, average number of solutions by size of agency statistic that you were just telling me about. When I looked at the two studies, I had both tabs up. I had the 2022 survey up, and then I had the 2023 survey up, and I'm kind of going back and forth just to see, 
just to look and compare what what happened year over year. Uh -huh. And I get yep. I get down to that page where it says, okay, here's the average number of solutions for a you know less than by revenue size. There's actually been growth. So so those numbers are are big, right? But there's actually been growth year over year. So we're seeing a trend across the board that more agencies are adopting more technology year over year. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. And, uh, and, and I mean, even as you think about it, so compared to the past, mm -hmm. a lot more focus on, a, a, again, it gets complicated, but a lot more focus on CRM, mm. marketing automation, mm -hmm. social media management, um, you know, those kind of, I would call more marketing lead gen and, um, and sales management. So some of that could be some of those platforms coming in mm. all, and it also could be the shiny object syndrome. So I went to this meeting mm -hmm. and, oh, I saw all these agents who are raving about X. Right. I got to get it. Right. I literally talked to an agent. I can't remember where it might have been Texas who said, I have so many platforms that I'm paying for and I'm not using. Yeah. Because he bought into the shiny object, mm -hmm. got to have it, had no plan for how to even implement it, much less maximize it. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of my frustrations is sometimes they're stuck in long term contracts Yeah, that they can't get out. Yep, and, and and you know, so there's there's just a whole lot of stuff around that, and I, it's frustrating, and, and that really leads into another number that we have in the report, which is, what's st the question is what stage of technology presents the biggest challenge, and by far the highest percentage across all revenue sizes was getting the most out of the tool. Okay, now what, let, let's set the scene on that because there are so okay. there 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 were two other options. One was um, one was finding the right tool, finding the right tool, and then the other was implementing the tool. Implementing the tool, that's right. Yeah, and then the third was getting the most out of the tool. That was the so so. Here's the question: You can pick one of the three. You have to pick the one that's the biggest pain point, and you're saying across the board. Every size agency said the biggest pain point between finding the right tool, implementing the right tool, and and maximizing the right tool is that last one, getting the yeah, most so out of it. Just, I'll just give you one line example. This okay. is a revenue agency between a million and two million. Okay. 14% said the biggest pain was finding the right tool. Okay. 20% said the biggest pain was implementing the tool. 67% said getting the most out of the tool was the biggest pain. It's not even close. It's not, not even close. close. And, and that's consistent through all those revenue categories. That's, yeah, that's an issue. So we have a world, see, I, and I just want to take a step really quick and, and look back at history. Because I remember when I joined TrustedChoice.com, this was six years ago now. Um, and Excuse this, me, how long ago? Six years? Five? Six years? Six years. Five, yes, six years, I think. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, listen, Steve, I'm trying to sound like I, I'm old and I know what I'm doing, okay? Give me give me a minute here, sir. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I know, I don't, I don't. Now I don't have to, but I get it. So, whew, six years ago, man, whew, back in the dark ages, um, I remember when we started Agency Nation and the biggest topic was, is technology going to kill the agent? And Ryan yeah. and I would get, you know, on the podcast every week or write content or be on YouTube talking about how we needed to digitize, how the agent needed to modernize. And at this point, I would say we're in a world where that's really happened. We're there. The, the agent has the technology. They, on average, a, a less than $500 million revenue agency has over six pieces of software. That's, that is digital, digitally transformed. That is modernized. Right yeah. now, I'm hearing yeah. the issue isn't the fact that they've bought in; it's whether they're really investing in it and taking it to the next level inside their agency, and and, and making sure staff is using it. Mm -hmm. Right. I see, again, mm -hmm. I continue to hear, you know, how do I get my staff to come along? How do I get them to make changes in what they've been doing? Um, 
so the and that really goes to the implementation part of trying to be successful with what you're doing and getting staff buy-in and helping them understand how it's going to make their life better and their customers life better mm-hmm. okay so how now does Catalyt help with that do you guys yes. I know I know that you help with guidance and you know being that Google of insure tech that you can go and find any information but it seems like you guys are recognizing that this is an area and as a you know as a as a startup company, like you're able to pivot and say, here's a pain point. Like we want to solve that. Right. Is that? Yes. Yes. And, and so we do that in multiple ways and it really is a mixture of do it yourself. So Mm -hmm. kind of of agents can go in, get information Mm -hmm. and do it with you and do it for you. So Mm -hmm. the do it for you is our consulting arm that we have built now and are pretty active in, offering to agents who want more one-on-one help. Uh, And one of those consulting that were packages, uh, uh, probably the best way to say it that we're putting together is uh, tech stack management is kind of what we're calling it right now. And it really is focused on getting the most out of the tool and and being an external force or person who can go into the agency and, okay, what do you have? What are you using? What's, What's redundant? What's duplicate? I had one agent tell me, a board in Georgia member, they had four different ways to email their clients. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. So it probably was added over time. Yeah. They might not have realized they had capability already. And and there may be a reason why they need it, but mm-hmm. that would be a question we would ask and delve into and maybe make the recommendation they get rid of one or two or three and, and consolidate into one area. Uh, even though it, it, you may have better a few better things in one than the other, et cetera. You know how that goes, right? You, you, you make choices. But if you spread yourself too much, then again, you're not getting the most out of each tool mm-hmm. and it's costing you more. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we want to try and, and really help with. And I would say the other way we help is we have, we have three live events every month. So first event, is what we call a hot topic. So it's a deeper dive into something. So we've done already done one on generative AI. Uh, we've done one on MFA. We've done one on, you know, so those are sometimes I pick the topic because I think they need to know. Sometimes it's feedback that we get. The second, though, uh, Tuesday of the month, it, what we call open Q&A. So think mm-hmm. about it as a group mastermind or ask me anything we literally get online. Sometimes nobody shows up. Sometimes agents show up. We encourage them to write down their questions they have and then ask. And my team is on there and we will answer the question or we will find the answer if we don't know it. Mm -hmm. So they have a place to go at least once a month to get their questions answered. That's awesome. And so that's how we're trying to kind of do it yourself. You can Mm -hmm. go do your own research or let us help you, mm-hmm. and we've created avenues to help them get the information they need to make wise decisions. That's fantastic, wonderful. So if you are listening and you're in that 67% that feels like you're not getting the most out of your tool, there is help out there. Uh, check out you know, sure. Catalyt.com. Uh, Steve and his team are wonderful. Okay, so let's dive into, um, there, were, there were three th- other things that really stood out to me in uh, in the study. One was the cyber platform adoption. And just mm-hmm. to be clear, when we say cyber, we're not talking about whether agencies are selling cyber. We're talking about whether they're purchasing a cyber platform to protect their data. To protect their agency, correct. To protect their agency. So obviously in a world where the data economy is growing and we have all kinds of breaches arising here, you know, all over the place. I mean, my gosh, we just took a 35, 40 minute security training. This, the entire company of Vertifor had to take it. I was getting right. hounded by HR at, you know, 6 PM on a Tuesday night because I hadn't taken it yet. Um, so, yes. so companies take this very seriously in 2023. Uh, what, what is, what, what's, what's going on in the independent agency world with cyber? So when we ask the question, do you have a cybersecurity platform or vendor? Mm-hmm. Okay. 59% of agencies said no. Mm. And 
Then we asked, so what is it? 41% said, yes, they do. And then when we asked, who do you use? By far the largest percentage uh, by multiples was local IT provider, which might be okay, right? But again, that's 41%, 59 don't. Whew. Yeah. And so um, that's a really concerning answer. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we can't protect our own private data, how in the world are we going to convince our clients that they should protect their private data? Right. And that really is my takeaway. Uh, and and I would say it's it is oh, year over year getting better, mm -hmm. but still big gap there in terms of expectations as well as um, making those decisions to add the tools they need for for data protection. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And it's you know it, it's tough to hear. I'll be honest because in the insurance industry, data is really our product. So whereas I think other verticals spend money securing, like let's say you sell shoes, right? You're gonna spend money securing a warehouse of some sort. Uh, you know, that warehouse is whatever is being used to house and store your data. So mm -hmm. making sure that infrastructure is secure has gotta be top priority. It really does. Yep, agreed. All right, marketing. Um, continued trend on marketing software and this one's going to make me cry too as a yeah I, 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 I it should actually so i will tell you so i've actually had so the assessment we now have at catalyst um is a much improved version of something that i developed probably 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and this provided to agencies as kind of a, a a tool that they might be able to use and, and i will say consistently marketing and sales has been the lowest scored category of technology. And, you know, when we talk marketing and, and sales, that's lead generation, that's marketing automation, that's sales um, management, right? There are a whole bunch of kind of areas there. And that trend continues. I mean, so again, in our latest survey, um, when we asked, are you using a lead generation platform or service? Um, and, and, and again, a, a little bit of, you know, did we phrase the question correctly or not? Whatever. We keep refining that. Mm -hmm. But 13% said, yes, they do. And wow. if organic growth wow. is key, right? 13%. Yeah. yeah. And again, when asked, you know, what are you using? Um, it, it really is all over the board. Um, uh, and Trusted choice is number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I would say that is a lead generation service if agencies are using it. Um, the problem I've always had with that is do agencies even know what to do with a lead <laughs> and how to follow up with a digital lead? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, their satisfaction is three stars out of five. So I think that not does not speak to trusted choice. That speaks to agencies understanding this is a different kind of lead that requires a different kind of follow-up and engagement. Um, and I, I've felt that for a long time in terms of trusted choice. They do provide leads. I know agencies that are making a ton of money on trusted choice leads, and they understand the process that they have to follow in order to maximize those leads. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then we asked about marketing automation. So, um, having a program in place that automatically follows up for you. It's what I call the industry agency problem of follow-up failure. And I always refer to Kelly Donahue Piro and her she secret shopper service that she has people call up agencies nationwide, ask for a quote, personal lines, and then tracks. Did the agency talk about the difference between, you know, a captive agent and, a, and an independent agent? Did the agency follow up? Did all these kinds of things? I, I think the worst statistic, I'll say it that way, I call it cringeworthy statistic, <laughs> is that 
her latest results, and, and they've been a couple years old because they suspended it during COVID. I don't know if they've started it up again. 39% of the people who called for a quote and gave the agency the information were never contacted again. Wow, 39%. Yes. Wow. So, and that's what a mark, you know, again, I'm, for wow. you, I'm speaking to the choir, but the audience, so, <laughs> that's what a marketing automation system will do for you. Okay, now hold on a sec. Uh, I have the Heath Sheeran in the office with me today, in the podcast studio, I should say. And um, he just joined the Vertifor team. He was actually uh, Kelly's partner in crime for a couple years and then uh-huh. jumped on board uh, uh, Vertifor. And he just wrote on a, on a sheet of paper as he was looking over, uh, jumped from 39% now 46%. That is the oh, most, okay. that is the most recent I, statistic. Like I, said, I haven't seen more later uh, numbers. 40, think of that. 46%. They gave all the information. Yes, high intent, high intent. Yeah. Um, crazy, Yeah. crazy stuff. And Sydney, to, to give you a little more of my history, I started using marketing automation in 1992. Mm. This was a program called Nurture. It was a software program that printed out letters every day, physically printed letters that I signed, folded, put in an envelope and mailed based on my campaign of, of sending a letter every 30 days to prospects I had identified I want to do business with. This is not a new concept. Wow. And I've been astounded at how resistant agents have been yeah. to this. So, okay, hmm. so hmm. Um, I will start using 49% or I For- will contact either Stephen or Kelly <laughs> and ask them for their latest number. 40, 46%, 46%. 46%, okay, yes. thank you. Yes, yeah. well, we'll, we'll give them the three points back. We'll give them the three points okay. back. Um, okay, yeah. last, last uh, data point here that I wanna talk to is, and this is so unique, by the way, this is so unique. Um, I, I mean, granted, the entire study, I think, brings to the surface uh, insights that we've never had about the independent channel and, and how agencies are adopting technology. But this particular data point brings in the carrier perspective. So It does. So you guys... And, and, and I have to say I'm particularly proud of this because the industry has been reluctant to ask the question. Mm. And I think that is one of the ways that Catalyst can add value really because we're one step removed Mm -hmm. and our whole focus is doing what's best for agents. And agents want to know their carrier partners. They're an important piece of the entire ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. We need carriers and we need carriers to create ways for agents to be more, um, what's the right word, efficient. Yes. Right? And yes. so here's what we asked. We asked agents to list their top three carriers. That's all. And we didn't do data drop downs. We didn't, so, that, so we just got all kinds of stuff. I think we ended up with about 200-ish carriers. And then we asked them to rate the carrier in three areas. First area is they are forward thinking. On a one to five star, how would you rate the carrier? Hmm. Second, they provide the tools I need to maximize efficiency, one to five stars. And three, they are easy to do business with. And we ended up in the report with 51 insurance companies listed. That is based on a total of at least five responses from agencies. So if a carrier's there and listed, they had at least five responses that we averaged together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we, we two pages in the report, we talked about this a bit. First page is alphabetical, so make it easier for agents to find their particular carrier partner. And the second is ranked by overall average. So we took those three averages, made an overall average. And what's interesting to me is of the top 10, 
mm-hmm. carriers. Mm-hmm. Eight are regionals and two are nationals. Interesting. Now, don't tell any names because I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to know the names of the carriers, you have to go download the study. Uh, you have to go go to catalyst.com, put your email address in, get that study. Um, but, okay, so you just said eight regional carriers and two national carriers. National carriers, correct. That is fascinating. So, so... And, and so the, uh, let me give you this data point, too. So the highest score okay. is the average, highest average score is 4.8 out of 5. Really high. Yeah. The lowest is 2.7. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Now, my hope, my hope and my desire is that this will become a talking point mm-hmm. with carrier partners. Mm-hmm. Why are you ranking this way? And again, it's agents' perception of these three things. And, you know, and, and really it shows there was work to be done. And we've talked as an industry a long time about the ease of doing business and, you know, our carrier partners and what they do for agents, et cetera. This is the first time I'm aware of we've got some data. And you could argue how good it is. That's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. But we've got a, a starting point of data around carriers and what they're doing or what they're not doing well for yeah. agents. Yeah, it, it is an important part of the conversation. And I think one that has been, uh, it, it will never be an equal conversation, right? I, I think that's the wrong term to use, but it should be an equitable conversation. Yeah. And mm-hmm. to get there, you have to have transparency. So right. I love it. I appreciate the work that you guys are doing. It's awesome. Um, for, for those of you listening, uh, Steve, what is the best way? I mean, I, I keep saying catalyst.com. Is there a better yeah. like slash something so, or? Yeah. So let me give you a couple, couple okay. ways to connect with me. One is certainly catalyst, C A T A L Y I T catalyst for change it for technology. The like domain it. was available. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it is a little awkward, but kind of once you get it, it, it sticks. Uh, and my email is steve at catalyst.com. Um, or for general questions or information, hello at Catalyst will get you into our help system and somebody will get back to you with, you know, whatever we can do to help. Um, I'm also pretty, um, what's the right word? Uh, LinkedIn is the primary social platform that I spend time on. And uh, typically Steve Anderson or Steve Anderson Insurance, uh, you'll be able to, uh, I think, find me pretty quickly. Awesome. And so. Send a connection request. Let me know you listen to this because um, I don't accept every connection if I can't identify kind of who they are or where they're coming from. But um, yeah, I'd love to connect with uh, anybody listening and uh, answer any questions you might have. Wonderful. Well, we're excited to see where Catalyst goes. Uh, for those of you guys who you know, have listened and, and are interested, I would uh, you know, just take my, my Vertifor hat off, take my, I guess, my side Catalyst baseball cap off. Uh, as Sid Rowe, like you really could not get in touch with a better team of people who's really trying to make an amazing uh, change in the industry and truly transform, help independent agents transform through tech. So, Steve, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, excited to see where things go, and you know, hopefully, we'll have you back in 2024 to look and see what's going on in the. And, and th- that's our goal. I mean, it, it, we always knew we wanted to do it multiple times. Yeah. And to start identifying trends and is progress being made and those kinds of things. So again, put some numbers around what are uh, mostly anecdotal at best conversations right now. That's right. So thank you for having me, uh, Sydney, and um, and always great to talk with you. Wonderful. All right. Hey, if you want to uh, catch the next episode next week, make sure that you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. You can find us on any podcast platform. If you want to watch us, we're on YouTube. Uh, If you want to listen, Apple, Google, Spotify, whatever you want. And we hope to see you next week. 